Amen. Okay, let's go. Are you there? To whom then will you liken me? Or to whom shall I be equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created the things who brings out their host by number. He calls them all by name, by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one is missing. Say amen. Not one is missing. To whom then can you compare God? Well, the Bible is talking here in Isaiah 40, 25. In fact, the whole chapter 40, if you read it carefully, is talking about the greatness of God. How great God is. How awesome he is. Letting us know that there's nothing that you can compare God to. You know, uh, as the old folks used to say, God is so high you can go over him. He's so deep you can go under him. He's so wide you cannot go around him. There's none that you can compare God to. And until we fully understand the greatness of God, we are bound for failure. It's when you fully understand how great God is, how awesome God is, that you will begin to take stand and believe for greatness. The Bible says the people that know their God shall be strong. The people that know their God shall be what? Strong. So if I know my God, the Bible is expecting me to be what? Strong. The Bible says the people that know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploit. They shall do great things. If I know God, if I understand how great God is, if I understand the awesomeness of his power, I must, I must purpose in my heart to do great things for his glory. We've been talking here in the winner's night that God don't want us just to sing about his greatness. Religion will mold you just to sing about God's greatness. But a relationship with God will empower you to demonstrate God's greatness. Amen. I don't like religion. I don't like religion. And when Jesus came to the earth, he didn't come to start a new religion. He came to restore mankind to God. He came to restore what was destroyed in the garden. Religion is part of the problem that we have in this world. If you really look around, if you really look into uh, the heart of uh, the matter, you will understand that majority, the biggest problem we have in this world is because of religion. Religion cannot solve the problem. Religion cannot change nobody. If it's going to change you, it's going to change you from bad to worse. But a relationship with God, a relationship with God can change you and set you up for greatness. If you read your Bible, you will understand that every man, every woman in the Bible that understood God's greatness, they did great things. Every man, every woman in the Bible that understood God's greatness, they did great things. Did, does it matter where they were coming from, what they did in their past? But the moment they understood the greatness of God, they went on to do great things. For the people that know their God shall be strong. There's a strength that rises from within a believer when you fully understand the greatness of God. There's a power that rises within you when you fully understand the greatness of God. You cannot be the same. You cannot stay at the same level. If you fully understand how great God is. There's no reason at all for me to be defeated. For me to be stuck. For me to be shut out. If I serve, just think about it, a big God, a great God. There's certain things that doesn't make any sense at all. You don't even need to be a theologian to understand. You just need to use common sense. Can you imagine? If I serve such a big God, if I believe in such a great God, a God who created the heavens and the earth, a God who said, let there be light, and there was light. A God who opened up the sea and made a path for his people to cross. 
A God who caused manna to fall from heaven and water to flow from the rock. If I serve the same God, why should I settle for defeat? Problem is somewhere. There's a, there's a, there's a shortage somewhere. And it's not on God's side. It's not on God's side. It got to be on my side. I need to reset the breaker. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that I can get the power to flow freely. Hallelujah. Something got to be wrong. This the, God didn't just save me so that I can just put on my I love you Jesus t-shirt and go about town being religious, carrying the biggest Bible. And, 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 and. No, it doesn't make any sense. That's not what I was saved for. That's not what I was saved for. Jesus said to the disciples, you are the light. You are the light. Wherever you go, where there be darkness, when you show up, darkness must flee because you are the light. That's powerful. You are the light. Darkness cannot prevail when the light shines. Jesus said, guys, hey, let me tell you, you are the light. You are the light. You are the light. You are the salt. Wherever you go, you bring out flavor. Wherever you go, because that's who you are. You are the salt. You are the light. When Jesus spoke to the disciples, he was speaking to everyone that would come to believe and accept him for who he is. Amen. He was speaking to you. He was speaking to me. He was speaking to us. Today he said to you, you are the light. Do you have Christ? Do you have the spirit of God living inside? So you are the light. You are the light. But you have to accept it. You have to receive it. You are the salt. Don't go about like you don't know who you are. Because until you fully understand who you are and understand God's greatness, the devil is going to abuse. The devil is going to do to you as he feels like. There's certain things that you will not accept when you fully understand who you are. When I had a religion, didn't have God, I used to accept everything. Because sometimes the terrible thing about religion is that religion can condition you to accept whatever comes. So whatever came... <laughs> I accepted it. But when I understood the greatness of God and discover who I was in him through Christ, Jesus said, wait a minute here. Devil, I'm no longer your garbage can. What you used to dump on me before, you cannot do it anymore because I am who God says I am. He is great. He is awesome. He can do all things. And I tell the people, last Monday, he is my senior partner. Amen. Amen. He is my senior partner. I'm a junior partner. He's a senior partner. I'm connected to him through a relationship with Christ Jesus. I'm connected to him. Peter said once we were not a people. We were not a people, but now... Not only that we are, he says, you are now royal priesthood. You are part of royalty. There's no room for defeat. Come on. When I was afar from him, when I was not connected, I accepted whatever the enemy brought upon me. Now that I'm connected. But now that I am connected. I'm not settling for anything less than what God has promised. You do, come on, don't look at me like I owe you money. <laughs> Take it and receive it. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to impart something to somebody here right now. Hey man, we're not here just to fulfill a religious duty. We are here to be empowered. We are here to get to know our God and be strong and do great. Well, Bishop, I would, I would have done great things had I, had I, had I was born in, in a different home. Oh, I'm sure I would be much further. Come on. It has nothing to do where, with where you're coming from. It has everything to do with whom you believe in. 
who you are trusting. Well, Bishop, I, I would surely, I would surely be father if I didn't make all the mistakes I made. Hey, hey, your mistakes has nothing to do with the plan that God has for you. Amen. Amen. The mistakes you made while you were in darkness cannot stop you from fulfilling the plan and the purpose that God has for your life. If you've come to understand who he is and who you are in him. He is great. He is awesome. So every man in the Bible, every woman in the Bible that understood God's greatness did great things. Did great things. Did great things. Did great things for the glory of God. God's name was greatly glorified through them. What about me? What about you? What about us? Are we here just, just, just to say, okay, I go to church. Ah, if that's what your, your going to church is all about, it's a waste of what? Of time. I don't come to church just to fulfill a religious duty or to impress my neighbors. Amen. I come to church as I go to the gas station when I'm running low on gas. I come to be empowered. I come to draw power. I come to be taught. I come to be enlightened. So that when I leave here, my tank is full. So that I can keep on running for the glory of God. I come to give him my praise. I come to give him my worship. I come to serve. Amen. So that he can deposit more in me. In order for me to continue to go further for him. When you fully understand God's greatness. Your mindset will change completely. Your heart will change. And everything else around you will change as well. For the glory of God. Abraham almost died on the wrong side of life. Without fulfilling his purpose. Poor man. He had so many great things trapped within him. But he didn't know God. He didn't know the greatness of God. He was stuck. On the wrong side of life. But when Abraham understood the greatness of God. Abraham moved to the right side. And began to walk in the plan and the purpose that God had for his life. And you got to keep on reminding yourself daily. Amen. Amen. About the greatness of God. How great God is. How awesome he is. When the Bible says that you are blessed if you meditate on his words day and night. What is he trying to tell you? You are blessed if you stay mindful of who God is. Go to quick, quickly. Go to Genesis 15. Go to Genesis 15. Because if you don't meditate on the word of God, the devil will come to try to wipe out the promises of God from what? Your mind. Go to Genesis 15. Are you there? If you did, say amen. amen. Jesus, you are blessed. You were there before I told you to go there. You are in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you there? Yes. Praise the Lord. You got to be always mindful of God's what? Greatness. God's greatness. God's. Hallelujah. God's power. After these things. Are you there? Yes. The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying. What came to him? What came to him? Word. The word. Say it's all wrapped up in the word. Yes, it's all in the word. The word of the Lord came to him in a vision say. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. You exceedingly great reward. I know what some of you are saying right now. Well, Bishop, that's my problem. You see, I, I, I don't have no vision. I haven't had no vision. I cannot remember the last time I had a vision from God. Come on, step out of that. Do you know why the word came to Abraham in a vision? Abraham didn't have a Bible like you. 
In old days, God spoke to man through, through various ways. But in this day in which you and I are living in, you don't need to sit there and go shut yourself in a room waiting for a vision. You open your Bible, the word of the Lord comes to you. Amen. 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 <laughs> you open your Bible, the word of God comes to you. So don't, don't go sit there, I'm waiting for the vision. The, old vision, the minute I get that vision, I'm going to run like Abraham. No, you got the word. You have the Bible. When you come to the house of the Lord and there are servants of God speaking under the unction of the spirit of the Lord, you receive in the word of God. Your spirit must be stirred up to get up and run with what God is giving you so that you can take possession of what God has in store for you. So the Bible said the word of the Lord came to who? To Abraham in a vision. And he said to him, Abraham, don't be afraid. I am your shield, your very great one, reward. You see what God said to Abraham, don't be afraid. God would never tell Abraham, don't be afraid, unless Abraham was afraid. So he sent him, don't be afraid. So Abraham at this point, even though he had experienced the power of God, the blessings of God in great ways, and he had prospered and had great success, but Abraham was now in fear. Why was he afraid? What was he afraid about? Abraham was now afraid because he felt that he had acquired so much wealth, but he didn't have a son to inherit his wealth. Well, so he's living in fear, man, I'm going to have to leave all my wealth when I die for this stranger, this servant of mine from Damascus. So now he's living in fear. Why is he living in fear? He's living in fear because he has allowed the enemy to replace the promise of God in his mind. Abraham was no longer mindful of what God had promised him. So now he's afraid. He's afraid. What is in his mind? The devil has put this thought in his mind that he will never be a, a father and that he will never have an heir of his own body to inherit his wealth, his wealth. So he's a little depressed. Man, all these things that I've accomplished, I'm going to have to leave it for a, for a stranger. But you see, that's where you have to be careful because that thought did not come from God. And the Bible says that every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God must be arrested and taken what? captive. Because if you don't do that, if you believe that thought, that thought will replace the promise of God in what? In your mind. You see, that thought that Abraham had didn't come from God. God didn't say that his, 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 his ear was going to be a stranger. The devil put that thought in his mind. Now he's living in fear. Look what happened. When you believe the devil's lies will come fear. So you have to be alert. You have to be mindful of the promise of every time a thought come across your mind that didn't come from God. It is your responsibility to arrest it. It means that that thought is trespassing. It means that thought is what? Trespassing. And you have the responsibility to arrest. Wait a minute. Where did you come from, thought? You did not come from God. So I'm not going to... Let you have your way in my mind. My mind is reserved for the promises of God. Amen. This thought didn't come from God. Did, what? A stranger will be my heir? God didn't say that. God told me that my own son will have an But You see, if you are not mindful of the promises of God, guess what? The devil come and he plant his seeds. God is telling you with long life, I will satisfy you. But along the way, because a little sickness that came into your body, now the devil is telling you that you're going to die soon. Now you're no longer remembering what God said. God says, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. But there you are living in fear because of this little pain in your belly. Now you feel like you're going to drop dead at any moment. And you keep on thinking about it. To the point that you even confessing it. My God, I feel like I'm going to die. Oh God, I feel like I'm going to die before I reach my 100th birthday. <laughs> when God says that he's taking you further, but you've allowed the thoughts of the devil to replace uh, the promises of God. In, uh, in your mind. You're no longer living for the promises of God. Now you've been driven by this thought that the devil put away in your mind. I, I, I don't know if you're understanding 
So he's living in fear. You see what happened what hap when you let the devil plant his what? Seed in your mind. Fear replaces what? Faith. What is faith? Faith is the assurance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. God gave him a promise, but that promise has been replaced. Now he's believing something totally different. And how you know he's believing it? You know a person is believing a thing when they actually speak it forward with their own mouth. When you reach a point that you speak in it, it's a sign that you are what? Believing it. So he's living what? In fear. Look what he says to the Lord. God says, I am your shield. I'm your very great reward. Abraham, I'm with you, man. Come on. Why are you afraid? I'm your God. There's nothing I cannot do for you. Come on, man. Don't let nothing discourage you. What would happen? And look what Abraham said to him. But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me? See, and I go childless. And the ear of my home is Eleazar of Damascus. You see that? What is he telling God? God, look. Look, God. You have not given me a child. Now, Anir my, will be the stranger from Damascus, one of my servants. Look, then Abraham said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my ear. And look what God said to him. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your heir. But one who will come from your own body shall be your Come on, you see that? Abraham, I didn't say that. This one will not be your heir. A one coming from your own body. One coming from your own body. Listen, I'm going to give you a son to carry on what I have started in you. Don't live in fear. I'm God. I'm still the same God that gave you the promise when I found you. He said, one coming from you will be your heir. Not this one. This what you're saying right now did not come from me. This what you're declaring right now did not come from me. Be careful what you allow the enemy to put what in your mind. And, and you adopt it as truth. To the point that you go about confessing it. Because the Bible says, this is what Jesus said. The things which you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall have. If you believe the lies of the enemy and you keep on confessing them, guess what? As you confess in them... You, you, you're calling it forth. You're calling it forth. You believe in the lies and you keep on confessing the lie. Well, I will never be anything. It looks like I will never be anything. Guess what? You're getting close to be nothing. Because that's what you believe in and that's what you call it. Well, I can never get this thing right. I can never get this thing right. Guess what? You're getting close to never get it right. Well, I can never succeed no matter what I try. I can never. Guess what? You're getting close to never succeed because that's what you believe in and that's what you confess. You got to be careful. Check your confession. Amen. There are things that you should not get out of your mind. Well, my husband never changes. My husband never changes. My husband never, my wife never stopped running her mouth. She's always running her mouth. Guess what? You giving her the fuel to keep on running her mouth. My business never prosper. No matter what I do, customer, boy, cu even though customers are coming, but customers will never come. No matter how hard I try, you curse in yourself. That didn't come from God. That's not what God says. God said that you shall flourish like what? A palm tree. Amen. And well, look how bad things are, how terrible things are. What God says, God says, call the things that are not as though they call it forth. Call it forth. Speak the word. Don't speak the devil's lies. You have the power. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You keep speaking death. You're going to eat the benefit thereof. Speak life. I was telling the people on Monday night when we started here, we, we, did, we didn't have a church. But I used to tell the people soon we're going to have churches all over. Amen. And today we have churches. Some I've never been to. We have churches that I've never been to. 
I just know we opened in them all. It started with us having half of a basement that was not even ours. But we were saying, we were saying, it's going to happen. I was the only pastor, but I was saying, we are going to have many pastors. We are going to have many servants of God serving in this ministry. None of you were here then, but I say, you're going to come. And here you are today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was saying, we're going to have the best musicians. Here they are in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you with me, friend? We didn't have musicians. I was the musician, the choir director, the preacher. Hallelujah. But you got to believe it and call it what for. You think the devil didn't speak? He, he was speaking, but I had no time for him. A couple of times he hit me hard, but I bounced back. Thank you, Jesus. Come, come, are you with me, friends? You got to be what? Strong and fight him. Don't believe his lies. Abraham, I didn't say that. The devil put that thought in your mind. And look at you. You confess it in. Read the next verse. And what God did to him, God grabbed him. And God said, boy, I got to take you outside. Come here, Juni. Boy, I got to. He said, let's go outside. Some of you, you're living on the inside. You're spending too much time on the inside. And, and on the inside, sometimes it's hard to see the greatness of God. Abraham was inside his little tent there. Little tent. Look up. All he could see was the tent ceiling. Nothing. Not greatness of God. He was only seeing his own tent that he had built for himself. God said, let's go outside. God said to him, let's go out? outside. When they went outside, God said to him, look up. And he said to him, I want you to do me a favor and count them stars for me. What God was doing to Abraham, he was reminding him of his greatness. He said, count them. And Abraham started counting and he went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five. Man, I cannot do this. God said to him, so shall your descendants be. The same way that you, it is impossible for you to count the stars. Your descendants cannot be what? Counted. What God did to Abraham, he renewed his mind. He said to him, Abraham, here you are worrying, living in fear, thinking that you're not going to have a son. Why? Because of your age? You believe signs more than you believe God. <laughs> Listen, I'm the God that renews your strength. When I'm ready to do what I have promised you, I, listen, I know just which button to press. <laughs> when I get ready to do what I promise you, I know which button to press. I know what to press. I know what to press. I know what to press to make things work. Hallelujah. Say, Abraham, I create everything. Can you see the stars? Not only that I created them, but I have them all numbered. And I have a name for each one of them. Isn't that amazing? He has them all numbered, and he has a name for each one of them. Bible says that God knows you so well. And God is interested about every little detail of your life. You know how I found that out? Because I found out that God has every hair on my head numbered. He said that he knows every hair on your head and he has them all numbered. If I was to pluck one out, he'll say, oops, number 15. But he has numbered the ones that he puts there. The ones you put yourself, those are not numbered. But <laughs> <laughs> laugh a little, laugh a little. Make, make yourself happy. Amen. A merry heart does good like medicine. Shout amen. I got you. <laughs> Gotta break the eyes. You was getting too serious here. Amen. They're getting too serious up in the house of the Lord. Amen. 
He has them all numbered. You know, uh, my hair used to be down here, but it's going up and... But if God was to come right now and look at me and say, boy, you've lost number one, number two, number three, number... Because <laughs> he has them all numbered. He has them all numbered. So that means he, he's interested about every aspect of your life. Every aspect of your life. And he's interested in every aspect. One time a lady said to me, I pray to Jesus for anything, bless the Lord. Two things that I don't ask God for. I say, what are those two things? He says, I don't ask God for, for love and I don't ask God for money. I say, sister, after salvation, the two most important things you have is love and money. Every so often you need some love and you need some cash. Amen. <laughs> Talking about you don't ask God for love. God, God wants, he created you with a desire to love and be loved. That's not from the devil. When you feel the desire to hug somebody, God put it there. When you feel a desire to be hugged, that's from God, sister, brother, whoever you are. If things are not good, they tell him, God, I need me some love. God, I need you to send the right person. What are you talking about? You don't ask God for love. You don't ask God for money. That's religion for you. Religion make you feel that. Well, God, you know, God is not in the, God is in everything. God is in everything. Read your Bible. The Bible says when Anna, Samuel chapter 1, don't go there now. When Anna went to the temple and she couldn't have baby and, da -da 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 -da, and she made a vow to the Lord. The Bible says when she left. The, the, the tabernacle and she went home the Bible says her husband knew her and God remember her what when the Bible says the husband knew her means she and the husband got together doing their thing and God remember <laughs> so that so so when they were doing their thing God was what watch and say oops yes I gotta bless her this time gotta be different from the last time Amen. So that means God was what? But he is. God said, Woo! I, I almost forgot Samuel. He, he dropped somewhere right there in the middle. What God created is pure and beautiful. Amen. And he said, Silver and gold are his so he has no problem with you having money boy if you all had a whole lot of money we would have so much more things for God because you would be doing so much more for the kingdom of God we would have we would have so many things going for the kingdom of God yes or no and you're talking about don't ask God for money why not God is not allergic to money he creates silver and he creates gold but as long as you keep believing that is a sin, it's a sin to be prosperous. It's a sin to be, that's a lie from the pit of hell. God cannot give you anything that you're against. So let's get back to the Bible now. So Abraham has been reminded about God's what? Greatness. He said, Abraham, look up and count them. Can you count them? No, I can't. Well, you see, you cannot be able to count your descendants. So I don't want you, Abraham, to believe that lie that somebody else will be your heir. And I want you to believe what I promised you when I found you, that I'm going to give you your own child. Your own child will be your age. So don't let age confuse you. Don't let the barrenness of your wife's uh, womb confuse you because I'm God. When, I'm, when I get ready to break it, I break it, then it will be well broken. All I need you to do is be mindful of my greatness. Are you here with me? Be mindful of my greatness. I am God. I am God. I am God. I am the almighty God. I'm going to do great things through you. So when you continue to read, you will see that Abraham went on to believe God. And the Bible said that it was accredited to him for righteousness. Hallelujah. He believed God and it was accredited to him for righteousness. And the Bible says from that time on, Abraham no longer. You want to know where to find it? Go to Romans 14, 17. Thank you, Jesus. Leave Old Testament. Come on, go quickly to Romans. And I'm going to finish with this. Please don't fall asleep on me. If we have any religious folks here today, they're having a bad reaction. <laughs> I pray they don't hate the bishop because I like to keep it real. Amen? Amen. 
I like to keep it real. real. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Are you here? Romans 4 what? Romans 4.17. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 4.17. 4.17. Hallelujah. Are you there? As it is written, I've made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead. And call those things which do not exist as though they did. Amen. You see from God. Remind him of his greatness. And he believed and it was accredited to him for righteousness. Now read verse 18. It says. Who contrary to hope. In hope believed. So that he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith. He did not consent. Are you there? His own body already dead. Meaning he did not consider what was against him. Stop considering what's against you. And hold on to what is for you. God is for you. And if God is for you, he can change whatever is against you. Keep reading. He did not consider the deadness of his what? But keep going. What else? Not the deadness of. Mm -hmm. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strengthened in faith. Giving glory to God. And being fully convinced. That what he had promised. He was able to perform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What God has promised. He is able to uh, perform. So God walked him through that process of counting the stars to renew his mind and to remind him of his greatness. Abraham, nothing is too difficult for you. And from that moment on, Abraham took his eyes from what was against him and he fixed his eyes on the God that was for him. You need to constantly, amen, remind yourself. Renew your mind with the promises of God. Amen. If the devil is tempting you to doubt God, go by the seaside. Stand and see. Amen. Look at the greatness of God. Amen. Get up in the night when, when you can see the stars. Look up to the sky and look at the stars. Look at the stars. Remind yourself, you know how many, how many stars are up there? God put all of them in place. All of them in place. Everything hangs at the word of who? Of God. He put them in place and he keeps them in place. Now this is the God that we serve. In. This is the God that we believe in. And there you are depressed. Because of a little situation that the devil has plagued your mind with. Making you feel like eh, it can never change. What are you talking about can never change? God is bigger than that. God is greater than that. God can change anything. The Bible says even the heart of the king. Meaning those who seem to be so firm and so powerful and unchangeable. God says even their heart. Are in my hands. And I can steer it in whichever direction I choose. He's great. Don't think small. He's awesome. He didn't save you just to, to add on to the number, to the bunch. He saved you for greatness. God saved you and I for greatness. He didn't save us just to be a number. He's, you have a great assignment on your life. A great plan God has in store for you. I don't know. Maybe your present condition is not favorable. Like Abraham's condition at that time was not favorable. Because his body was already dead. And the womb of his wife was also uh, dead. But yet, he believed God. 
I don't know how, but I know God is great. And I choose to believe him. I choose to believe God and lean not on my own understanding. I choose to acknowledge him in all my ways so that he can direct my path. I'm going to close with this. Stand and open your Bible because I said I was going to close one hour ago. And you probably don't believe me by now. But uh, after this, I'm closing. Second Samuel uh, chapter 22, verse 29. Here David, here David making a powerful declaration. He said, for you are my lamp, O Lord. Hallelujah. For you are my what? You are my lamp, O Lord. You are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord shall enlighten my darkness. David understood the greatness of God. David said, God, you are my lamp. And if you are my lamp, you will enlighten my darkness. Listen, I, I refuse to fear darkness because the Lord is my what? Is my lamp. He said, God, you are my lamp. In Psalms 27, he says, the Lord is my light and he is my what? salvation. The Lord is my light and he is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? What is he saying? David understood the greatness of God. God is great. God is awesome. God is with me. So if I serve the biggest, the greatest, the almighty God, what, what, what do I have to fear? God is bigger than your in-laws. You're afraid of your mother-in-law thinking that she's going to destroy your marriage. God is bigger than her. God is bigger than her. God knows just which button to press to silence her. You're afraid of your boss. You don't have to be afraid of your boss if you're doing what you have to do. And being diligent. Inside of your workplace. Your boss may be a bully, but God is bigger than your boss. May God is bigger than what? Your boss. He knows just what to do to change his heart and change his mind. You're afraid of that cell that the doctors detected in your body. Oh, this cancer cell is running too fast. God created you. He knows every cell in your body. He knows every cell in your body. He knows just what to do. Don't be afraid. Be like the Lord is my lamp. He shall enlighten my darkness. Whatever seems to be dark, I have the lamp to combat it. I have the lamp. The Lord is my. That's powerful. David understood the greatness of God. The Lord is my lamp. He's greater than all darkness. Whatever may be coming. God is greater. Whatever the situation. God is greater. David said, for by you I can run against the troop. Look at that. Oh, with God on my side, I can run against the troop. Meaning I can fight against an army. You know, sometimes the devil comes at you from every angle. He seems to come against you like an army. He has a whole army. Come. David said, I don't care who he's bringing against me. With God, I can face them. With God, I can. Listen, I've been through things where I felt like I was just going to disappear from the face of the earth. But God reminded me, I am with you. And if I am with you, who can be against you? Let the devil say what he may. Let the enemy say what they may say. I am with you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. People may fabricate lies. People may say things. People may do this. People may do that. People may go to the graveyard of your past to dig your past to try to come and accuse. Let them bring whatever they want to bring. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God will look at them and God will laugh. God says the wicked they plot but God looks down and he laughs. Do they know who they're coming up against? Do they know who they're trying to to bring down those that God plant, man cannot uproot. When God put his anointing on you, you're going to prevail over hell itself. Understand the greatness of God. Understand the greatness of God. You're serving a big God. You're serving a great God. You're serving an awesome brother. 
You are destined for greatness. You know why you're destined for greatness? Because your God is great. Your God is great. Don't settle for less. Don't think small. Think so big. That if you were to open your mouth and talk, people are going to think you're crazy. God like crazy people. God like people who think crazy thoughts. Hey, man, God like crazy people. Can you imagine looking at a hundred-year-old man? You're going to have a child. And, 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 and the people are saying, with what? <laughs> with what? Heaven, with what? He don't have what it takes to have a child. Watch and see. All, the only thing I want him to do is what? Believe. Oh, God, I love Jesus. You, listen, you, you have to think big. Think so big. Like, like, like Joseph, when his brother find out, found out what he was thinking about, he said, you crazy. He said, you, 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 you all don't know me. He said, listen, I, I had a dream I saw all of you bowing down to me. They said, what? You crazy, man. That will never happen. He come back again and said, brothers, guess what? I had another dream. What is this new dream about? I saw you. I saw mom. I saw dad. All of you bowing down to me. You, 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 you see, you serve a great God. You serve an awesome God. Don't waste time with small things. Think, think big. David said, with you, by you, I can run against the truth. I can run against the truth. I can run against the truth. And then he, he takes it further. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, by my God, I can leap over wall. You know, sometimes the enemy erects walls to try to block you. David says, all right. When you built a wall to try to block me, I'll go over the wall and leave the wall. Hey Amen. I'll, I'll go over the wall and leave the wall for you to face. I'm going to go over it, but you cannot go over it because you don't have the God that I have. David understood the greatness of God. Amen. He says, Hallelujah. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you put your trust in God, he becomes what? A shield. He becomes what? A shield. When you put your trust in God, he becomes what? A shield. Which means... God becomes a shield, meaning that anything or anybody that tries to get to you must get through God first. Anything or anybody that tries to get to you must get through God first. And I don't know anything or anybody who has ever gone through God. Impossible. Has never happened and will never happen. So the message that if you don't remember all that I've said to you, remember this one thing. Those who understand God's greatness will do great things. Amen. Those who understand God's greatness. I didn't say those who understand religion. I said those who understand greatness. That there's none that you can compare God to. That he is great. That he is a, when you fully understand it and accept it inside of you, you on your way to greatness. You are on your way to great. Comes what may, happens what may. You are on your way to greatness. You are on your way to greatness. You are on your way to greatness. Amen. Friends, it's a responsibility you have. Listen to me. We are living and believing that Jesus will come at any time. But listen to this. If Jesus don't come in your time and my time, what are you living for those who will come after you. What are you leaving? What, what are you leaving for those who are coming after you to hold on to? What are you leaving for those who are coming after you to hold on? What are you leaving for your children to hold on? What are you leaving for your grandchildren to hold on to? That they can look at it and say, no, mommy's God, granny's God was a real God. Look what happened. Look what happened. Look what happened. You know... It's a responsibility that you have. That you must make a difference. So that others can 
believe the God that you are serving. You know why many children nowadays don't want to believe the God of their parents? Because their parents were molded by the hand of religion. They didn't do great things. And the children now say, well, if God was so great, why this, why that would happen? So you have a responsibility to make the promises of God, leave the pages of the Bible and materialize in your life. So that when people say, when you say God is great, you can tell them, look, see, God wants you to do great things. You know what God did to the children of Israel when they crossed the Jordan River? He instructed the leaders to take some stones and build something in the middle of the river. Why are you doing that? He said like that. In the future, they can tell their children. When we needed a path to cross, God dried up the river and we crossed. And so the stones that you see there is a testimony of what God did for us when we needed him. That was actually to help the people understand, the, the descendants after to understand, the generation after to understand the greatness of God. They said, man, we better serve this God. He's a great God. He's a God who can dry up the river. He's a God who can dry up the sea. He's a God who can make water flow from the rock. Hallelujah, God is good.